This is Joseph Pipitone with Scalability Experts, and this video is going to cover SSL offloading using an F5 Big IP Local Traffic Manager. So I've logged into our F5, our primary unit, the currently active unit, and here is a list of our SSL certificates that we're currently offloading. One of the key benefits of SSL offloading is that it does give you the ability to manage all of your SSL certificates and SSL VIPs or virtual IPs, virtual servers, uh, from the F5 LTM GUI or a command line, uh, whichever you prefer. Uh, in this case, the benefit to going this route is not only are you offloading uh, uh, and having the F5 unit itself perform all of the traffic redirection and uh, SSL handling, uh, you are decreasing the load on your front-end content web server. Uh, in this case, uh, I have a SSL certificate that is, is going to expire on April 13th. Um, today is March 20th, and so uh, just to kind of be a little proactive, I went ahead and I purchased a new SSL certificate. And the reason why I purchased a new SSL certificate is because uh, renewing an SSL certificate is actually more expensive than purchasing a brand new one. And the more years that you purchase in advance, the greater discount you get. Uh, in this case, our vendor is Network Solutions. And I've already got, went ahead and purchased the new SSL. And what I want to do is, um, since this is not a renewal, this is uh, a, per a new purchase, we are going to essentially create a new SSL certificate uh, on the F5. And we're going to associate that SSL certificate with a new SSL profile. And then what we're going to do is, once the SSL certificate has been validated by Network Solutions, we will then put the new SSL into place. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new SSL certificate on the F5, uh, which then we can use to import a sign uh, to this unconfigured SSL certificate here. The name of this SSL certificate, our, our naming convention for the SSL certificate is simply just uh, the name of the website. And I've purposely blurred out portions of this video just for security of the company. Um, in this case, this is not a self-signed certificate. This is going to be issued by a CA, Network Solutions. The common name should always be the actual name of the domain that your users are going to hit this website at. So uh, in this case, I'll put the fully qualified domain name here, uh, division, organization, so on and so forth. Challenge password, I typically leave blank. And the key size, I'm going to do 2048. Uh, that seems to be the new standard. Uh, I've never I've never gone any higher than 2048, but the option for 4096 is there. So let's go ahead and get this created. Now, before I create this, my new naming convention, uh, since there already is a certificate with the name directory.domainname.com, I'm going to simply append... 2048 to the end of this, uh, and then I'll click finished. And here we have our CSR, Certificate Signing Request. Uh, I like to download just so I have it, and I'm going to select all and copy. Um, and I'll go to Network Solutions, and this, I'll click go to assign. Enter the domain name. And by the way, this is the common name. Make sure you use the common name. Otherwise, you'll get an SSL 
error. And this is a four-year certificate. And other hosting is what we want. We're not, we're not hosting it at Network Solutions. And here is where we can enter in the CSR. Now, for the F5 Big IP LTM, I'm using the 1600 series. Uh, we want to select Apache Mod SSL. That is the server software that you must select in order to get a, a, in order to submit your CSR correctly and be able to import that uh, into the F5. Okay, so our SSL certificate has been validated by the certificate authority. And what we want to do is import the key that they sent to us. Um, I've already logged into my Network Solutions account, and I've downloaded the necessary .crt file, uh, which is what I'm going to import. And what I did first was, since I already have other SSL certificates set up on the F5 side, uh, I've already imported the root certificates. And here I have a, here's our CRT file. Uh, and this is the file that is typically sent to you after the certificate has been issued. And I'll go ahead and open it and click import. And now we have a certificate and key as you can see here. And since this is a new certificate, uh, which we are going to apply to the virtual server on the LTM, uh, what I want to do is create a new SSL profile, client-side profile. And my naming convention, I, I usually start naming the profile with an SSL dash. And this one's going to be directory and as I said before, we already do have a SSL profile with the same name, so I'm going to append 2048 to the end of it. Parent profile, you can leave this alone uh, unless you have a um, template that you use or if you want to essentially copy uh, configurations from other profiles. Uh, in this case, I just like to start fresh. Uh, there's a certificate and a key that we are going to associate with this profile. The certificate is going to be uh, here. And also the key. And as you can see, uh, I'm not sure how much you could tell because I did have to blur out certain portions of this video. But the directory uh, uh, certificate, uh, I've actually, since we have two of them, uh, the best way for me to differentiate between the two is to append that dot .2048 or append some sort of a distinguishing character or, or set of characters that lets you uh, know that I am, in fact, picking the right certificate and key. And that's all we have to really do here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and click Finished, and we're back to our list of SSL profiles. Uh, so now what I need to do is go back over to our virtual servers. And let me just show you the actual web server here. And what I wanted to show you is that on the IIS web server, we have a website set up here. And as you can see, it's only listening on port 80. Uh, let me show you the properties and the host header here. Uh, we have two different subnets. Uh, one is for a corporate network and the other one is for a web network. Uh, this is an internal site, but we needed to be able to provide users with access from both networks. And as you can see, we don't have any SSL identities down here. There's no IP address associated with port 443. And that is because all of the all of the traffic between the client and this web server uh, is handled through the F5. The F5 is uh, acting as a proxy. And this is why we are uh, you know, offloading the SSL certificate to the F5. 
There's no additional configuration that needs to happen on the IIS web server. So what I wanted to do now was show you how to give this SSL certificate a good test before we roll it out into production. And the way that I do that is um, I've sort of came up with my own best practice, which should always be your best practice. Uh, and that is create a virtual server that is specifically used for testing and nothing else. Uh, this virtual server should be able to be accessible from the outside world uh, as well as internally on your networks. Uh, in this case, all I'm really looking to do is test the SSL profile that I just created. And it just so happens that I have this virtual server already set up for port 443. And like I said before, there is only port 80 uh, uh, traffic is only being accepted on port 80 on the internal uh, web server on our LAN. However, on the virtual server that I created, I want to make sure that the service port being used is 443 for HTTPS traffic. And so I'll go into my test virtual server. And as you can see down here um, under SSL profile, I have an existing SSL profile already associated with this VIP, but what I want to do is to be able to test the new profile that I did create. And the way to do that is to, and this is another reason you'll see when I hit this drop down menu, the other reason why I named it specifically is because number one, the F5 will not let you name it if it already exists, uh, or it won't let you create it if it already exists, but it's, it's, much more difficult to differentiate between multiple SSL profiles if you have <laughs> SSL profiles that are nearly identical. Uh, so the way that I'm able to do this is I use my appending-2048 in this case, and that's how I know that this is the newly created profile that I, that I just created. And I'll go ahead and update my test VIP. And then I, I want to make sure that that my Windows machine here is going to this test IP address rather than the IP address that we currently have in production. And the way that I do that is I edit my host file and I point my machine to this test virtual server. And now it's time to test the SSL. And the way to do that is to HTTPS for port 443. And here we go. Uh, so I want to view the certificate information. And here it is right here, April 9th, 2017. That is the newly created SSL, uh, a newly established SSL certificate that has an expiration date of April 9th, 2017. And that's how we do know that we are, in fact, going to the test virtual server with the newly purchased SSL certificate. Another way to verify that you are, in fact, hitting that test VIP is to just do a simple ping, clear it out, and uh, ping, and then ping the domain name that you want to test. And since I have this domain name in my host file, it is returning the test VIP IP address. And so when it comes time to do this in production, uh, we are ready to, all we have to do to put this into production is to simply open the current VIP that's being used for our website, in this case, directory. And it's very important to know that you should always schedule downtime first before you make a change like this in production. Uh, in this case, I do have downtime currently scheduled, uh, which... In reality, it's probably going to take about five seconds to make this change, but best practice is to schedule that downtime and at least let people know that you are making an update. And all we have to do to update this is to choose our newly created SSL profile here and click Update. And I'm going to take this out of my host file, save, and... I'm going to do a uh, IP config flush DNS, close it out, and I'm going to do a ping of the domain again. And now we're going to the other IP address, which is not the test VIP.
And now when I go to that website, I should see the new SSL. Here it is, April 19th, 2017. So we have successfully upgraded uh, and replaced the expiring SSL certificate with a new SSL certificate that won't expire till 2017. Uh, I, I always like to test with multiple browsers as well. Uh, I was using Google Chrome, but I want to go ahead and test with Internet Explorer. Most of the world does use Internet Explorer. And to validate, I'm going to click this lock to show the security support view certificates. And here we go, April 9th, 2017. And so now that we've finished up with our changes, uh, we always want to make sure that we synchronize our F5s. And the way to do that is just to click uh, Sync Recommended. We have two F5s. One is uh, an active unit. The other one is inactive. Uh, this is running in an active passive configuration, and which is especially helpful if you need to perform maintenance on one and fail it over to the other. Uh, depending on your configuration, uh, yours may be slightly different, but uh, typically this is the way that it's set up. This high availability uh, or config sync is what we use to config sync one active unit to the inactive unit. And the way that we do that is we want to synchronize to the peer. If I was to click this synchronize from peer, it would overwrite all the changes and I would lose everything that I just did. And I want to make sure that I'm on the active unit that I made the changes on and I want to synchronize it to the peer. And it's just a simple click of the button. And that's it. Once again, thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website at scalabilityexperts.com.